Before we get started, um, we are here to celebrate Johann Sebastian Bach's birthday. On this day, back in 1685, Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach was born in Eisenach, Germany. So today, we're here to celebrate Bach's birthday with some of Bach's music. Um, and what got this started is our bassoonist, Tim Wells, uh, ran across this. He works over at St. Olaf. I'm sure you all know that college a little bit. Um, over in Northfield and received an email talking about Bach in the subway. Well, Cannon Falls doesn't have a subway, but well, you do have a subway, but not per se, uh, for street musicians. Um, and this is an international celebration. So Tim was like, wouldn't it be really neat to get Cannon Falls on an international map? So today around the world, Cannon Falls is listed alongside all of the various places you see on the back of your program. I think we're the only place in Minnesota participated. Oh, really? Uh, I oh my are gosh. we? I think yes. we are. Yeah. Top of the I thought there was one in the cities, yes. but... It's there. Well, it's Falls. Cannon Falls is right up next. Yeah. Under Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> um, being from the South, I did get to meet you in Atlanta. That's good. <laughs> that only took you two minutes. <laughs> um, so what we've put together is a program with different kinds of things. Tim's going to begin with a solo, and then I'll do two solos just sort of to get us warmed up. And then we're going to try to play together and see what happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll be, and we'll be talking about the pieces a little bit throughout the performance. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Tim. Uh, I'm gonna, you see in your program uh, that I'm playing something from the unaccompanied cello suites, but this is not a cello. Uh, it, but it, uh, it's about as old as the cellos. Uh, and in box time, uh, bass instruments and melody instruments were fairly interchangeable. And so your bassoons and your cellos, your bass recorders, uh, they all played uh, bass basso continuo parts and they all did different things. Although some of the composers like Vivaldi started to separate them out. And a lot of times when you find manuscripts it just says basso, meaning that anything in the bass clef can play it. Uh, and uh, supposedly perhaps some fellow could sing it if they wanted to put words to it. So this is just the first movement. You'll recognize it immediately. And I think part of what today will, you'll find is that you're going to hear some pieces that you know that you may not have, have realized that they were Bach. Uh, and you're going to hear some pieces that uh, maybe are attributed to Bach but were maybe written by one of his 6,000 kids. Uh, we didn't have quite 6,000, but he had a lot. Can I find one? Uh, <laughs> I think he has descendants, I'm sure. Well, of course. Yeah. After 20 kids. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
pieces are sort of little pieces, I guess you would say, from a collection called The Well-Tempered Clavier. And this book was sort of written as practice studies for the piano. They're sort of little pieces that are intricate and difficult. And what Bach wrote on one of the front covers of one of this piece, of this piece, he stated, these pieces are for the profit and use of musical youth desirous of learning and especially for the pastime of those already skilled in this study. Um, what he did not include is librarians that enjoy playing as well. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, these next two pieces are just sort of little pieces that you can sort of get a flavor of what the musical youth were trying to learn and what all they were doing to try to learn it. So the first piece is um, Prelude in C minor, uh, BWV 847. And I'm going to do this one on the piano, and then the next piece we're going to switch over to harpsichord, which is more traditional for Bach. <clears throat>
A funny thing about that piece I didn't mention before I started playing, it has a nickname, or at least where I studied it has a nickname. They call it the sewing machine. So if you could hear that sort of repetitive rhythm and picture one of the old sewing machines that you had to pump, that's how it got its nickname. And this next piece, I'm going to do on harpsichord um, because the few people that I had listened to this said, hmm, why don't you try it on harpsichord and see what it sounds like? And it actually sounded better. So this one's a little more mel melodic than the first one, and it's going to pass a theme around from both left and right hand. Would Bach have written it on harpsichord? Yes. yes. Okay, I think it sounds nicer on harpsichord than piano. All of these pieces would have been written huh. for harpsichord. There was no piano that you hear me sounding, so totally different kind of style. Okay, now we're going to have a little fun, because um, what's a birthday party without dancing? Um, <laughs> the next two pieces... Yes. Are, are berets. Um, and berets, if I can find them, their dance style was a little different than our dance style today. There really was no such thing as a boogie woogie and get down and shake your hands and you know all of that stuff. You have to imagine when they went out to a party, they had on powdered wigs and they had on elaborate dresses and it was more to show yourself off than it was to actually dance. So they're a little more slow and stately. Um, and one of the interesting quotes I came up with explaining it, and it started out as a French dance, um, its distinguishing feature resides in contentment and a pleasant demeanor. At the same time, it is somewhat carefree and relaxed, a little indolent and easygoing, though not disagreeable. So that's sort of explaining how you dance to these pieces. <laughs> not <laughs> And also, I think when Tim and I were laughing and practicing, I also made mention that usually in the dances you sort of 
stood at a little distance from your partner, they probably were not as accustomed to bathing as we were. And they were wearing wool. So if you can imagine, you may not have wanted to do a real close slow dance with your partner. <laughs> And again, Tim's got the hard stuff. I'm lazy. I have to have a page turner. <laughs> to attend weddings and you go to a lot of weddings. It's called Bistu by Mir. Um, and as Tim alluded to earlier, this is probably one of those pieces, can't be sure, that is attributed to Bach. So we'll celebrate that. And since it is often used at weddings, um, it usually has a, a, a soloist singing. Um, and it is somewhat love poetry. Uh, it has a, a little dark hint to it. So the poem that goes with this piece is, you know, bis du by mir is sort of if thou be near. So the poem goes as follows. If you are with me, then I will go gladly unto my death. 
and to my rest. Ah, what a pleasant end for me, if your dear hands be the last I see closing shut my faithful eyes to rest. So, next time you're at a wedding and you're wondering what the tune's about, just sort of remember it's not as pretty love poetry as you might think. pieces, we're going back to more happier tunes. We're going to do some minuets. Um, the, the first one uh, the first one is in a minor key, so it's not going to be as happy. The second one, if you've ever played piano, taken piano lessons, you will probably recognize it and you probably had to play it. So these are two minuets, so get back in your dance mode and you know look elegant and dance around. Can we all stand up? You certainly can. <laughs> Just don't get too close to no, your no, partner. Make it elegant. <laughs>
practicing again. big closer. <laughs> and we have saved the best for last. Um, this is a sonata. Um, if I could remember my music theory, I could explain to you all about sonata form. But basically what you've got throughout this entire piece, you've got a, a, a fast movement, and then we go into my, what I call the dreaded slow movement that you just kind of sleep through. And then Tim and I will wake you up at the end with another fast movement. Um, and throughout this entire piece, except for the slow movement, which is probably why I don't like it, um, the slow movement, Tim gets all the pretty stuff. And I'm just sort of fiddling around. If I start dozing off or something, Katie will wake me up. The, the, the first and third pieces, we're sort of passing everything around. So if you sort of picture two tennis players on a tennis court, um, except I would like to say we're probably a little more interesting than just watching tennis balls go back and forth. <laughs> That's kind of what's going on throughout this entire piece. So Sonata in G minor.